hi everyone i hope you're all doing really well and welcome back to my youtube channel for those of you that are new here i'm becca i'm a professional pet portrait and wildlife artist specializing in realistic color pencil drawings of animals so i've been uh, working through this little spaniel tutorial and i believe this is part four that we're on now um, i'm going to be making a start on the ear and hopefully we'll get the entire left ear done in part four so i'm going to make a start straight away I'll leave part one in the video description below as a link so you can go and watch that first if you've not um, worked through it so far. I'll also leave the line drawing the reference photo and a full materials list so you can follow all the way through. So I'm working on extra white hot press Fabriano Artistico paper and I'm going to be using a mixture of Faber-Castell polychromos and Caran d'Ache luminance. So I'm going to start by using the buff titanium luminance pencil. I always find that by picking out the palest colour that you can see and using that as the base layer um, really helps just, you know, add that first initial base. It's kind of a good place to start by picking out the palest colour that you can see. So in this case, it's like a really pale kind of creamy yellowy colour. So the buff titanium is literally perfect for that. I also love using luminance pencils as base layers. They're predominantly wax based, so they're a much softer pencil than the polychromos. So using them as a base layer just provides that really sort of nice creamy base to work on top of. Everything just seems to blend together a lot easier. So there's a little bit of fur right on the top left, kind of at the top of the ear that's being like directly hit by the light. So that fur almost looks white in a way. So with a slightly um, lighter pressure, I'm still going to use the buff titanium, but I'm just going to use it quite lightly and just fill in that area. You want to also kind of curve round each tuft and make sure you're flicking at the end of each of your pencil strokes to create that kind of wispy texture to the fur. So we want this little bit to be slightly darker than the paper, even though it is really, really pale anyway. Um, we want to be able to see it against the paper, but obviously it needs to be really pale in comparison with the rest of the ear. So I'm just keeping my pressure really light in order to build up that colour gradually. I'm going to leave that as it is for now, I think, and then just fill in the rest of the ear with a slightly harder pressure, still using the buff titanium. You always want to shade in the same direction as the fur as well and obviously it does help if you've got these initial outlines like that you can see as a guide. Once you've kind of worn down one side of your pencil you should get like a really flat sort of surface to the tip. And it's that side that you want to keep shading with because it'll give you a much softer line and therefore give you like a more even coverage all over. You only really need a pinpoint sharp pencil like right at the end when you're adding in all those details.
if you wanted to erase some of these initial outlines then you could have done but to be honest most of them are going to get covered anyway so i've just left them as, as they are um they're still quite quite faint to start off with So that should be nice and even all over the left ear. Sticking with the Luminance pencils, I'm gonna go in now with the Brown Ochre 10%. This is slightly darker, but still a really pale, sort of creamy yellowy color. And I'm gonna start working this into the gingery part of the ear. So basically everywhere other than that top left-hand section that's being directly hit by the light. And you kind of wanna add this all over as well. Um, don't worry about you know where those shadows are or anything just yet. You just want to add a layer of this all over, kind of going in the same direction as the fur. I hope you all had a lovely Easter weekend as well. It went really fast. Um, I didn't really do much, just went on a few walks. The weather was actually all right, other than the bank holiday Monday. But um, yeah, it was nice to have a few days off. And it's, but it's also equally as nice just to get back into it. Um, I think I'm so lucky in that sense that I really look forward to kind of coming back to work and getting stuck into everything. So you want to um, release your pressure slightly where that fur is slightly paler. So for example, this curl that's going up, it's still quite pale. It's probably not as dark as the brown ochre 10%. So therefore you don't need to add loads of it, just a really light layer just over the top slightly. But you might just wanna leave the majority of it just showing that buff titanium. It should look something like that. So we've kind of mapped out where that gingery fur sort of ends and then that pale fur begins right at the top. You can kind of see the difference now. I'm also just gonna add a little bit of the pink white luminance pencil. This again is another really pale, kind of um, a good color to use as a bit of a base layer. And I'm gonna just add a little bit of this with like a medium pressure just to the palest parts in the fur on the left hand side just to give them that slight like pinky tone i'm just being like fairly rough and sketchy with it to be honest like just mapping in that color so just added a little bit of that 
like that. Next up I'm going to use the warm grey one just to finish off the top left hand side of the ear which is being directly hit by the light. So obviously we've already kind of filled in this white fur on top of its head and we can see a difference between that fur and the white paper. So we want to achieve the same sort of thing and the warm grey warm polychromo is a brilliant colour to do that with because it's so pale and just neutral really. It's kind of like a just off white so it's very similar to the paper colour but you can kind of use it in a way that builds it up gradually without being kind of too dark and overpowering. So I'm just very very lightly going around some of those tufts. So you almost want to emphasise those really subtle shadows even more than you think, just to definitely make sure that it's showing up over the paper or like next to the paper colour. Kind of doing some individual flyaways as well, sort of overlapping, kind of curving and flicking downwards, just following along some of these tufts. Just doing kind of soft back and forth motions using that flat side of the pencil. So I think I'm going to leave it like that for now. Um, obviously we can go back to it the further we progress through the ear. But I am going to leave it like that for now. Um, don't want to add too much but I think it's looking alright as it is for now. So next up I'm going to go in with the shade Butternut which is slightly darker than what we've used so far. And this is where you can start building up that tonal value and start separating all these lines into kind of individual shapes and individual tufts. So you can see that I'm still at this point still being quite sketchy with it. I think the looser that you are with your pencil and by doing things like quickly um, and holding your pencil further up to get that you know loose movement it does add that sense of movement to the ear 
And if you think about it, like Spaniel's ears in general are fairly complicated to draw. You know, a lot of artists don't really like drawing Spaniel's ears just because there's so many different tufts that are overlapping and it seems quite complex. But I think as long as you've got the texture of the ear, you've built up your tonal value and you've, you know, achieved that level of depth, um, even if some tufts aren't perfectly placed, like the same as the reference photo, I think that's absolutely fine because you've got to think that, you know, ears aren't kind of set in stone. Like when, when a dog's photographed, two seconds later, the ear will be in like a completely different position. All these tufts will be like all over the place because it's in the wind or something like that. They get blown around. So you've kind of just got to use it as a guide, really. And I think the quicker and the more sketchy you are at this stage, it does help, you know, give that movement to the ear. So I've mainly added it kind of at the center going down here, as well as just going along some of these initial outlines. So they stand out a little bit more for when we go in with our um, darker colors to map out the shadows. I'm gonna go in briefly with the Warm Earth 5%, which is a lovely kind of pinky tone. And I'm gonna use this kind of where this shadow ends and kind of merges into more of that ginger fur. Obviously we've not drawn in those shadows yet, but I'm just adding in this color first as like a bit of a pinky undertone. top of the ear as well. Always kind of flick in the end, releasing your pressure right at the end of each pencil stroke. So something like that, just added a little bit of like a pink tint, a bit of like an undertone before we build up those shadows. So to build up those shadows, I'm going to go in with the shade B Street, which is a polychromo, perfect kind of dark golden colour. So literally perfect for those shadowy areas. So I'm going to start with kind of this strip going down the ear.
I'm adding a little bit to the tip of that curl and then just underneath each tuft. So we can kind of see now where all those shadowy areas are, we'll kind of map them out. So I want to continue to darken them. So to darken those shadows, I'm gonna use the Van Dyke Brown Polychromo with a medium pressure and just work into everywhere where we just added that shade Beastry. This is kind of like a chocolatey warm brown. Um, so it's not too dark, but it will really help us to start building up that contrast within the ear. And you should find now that we're gradually kind of squashing down the teeth of the paper. At the minute in some areas it's kind of picking up that grain. So all of those like little grooves within the paper. Um, when you've only added so many layers, it does kind of pick it up until you really kind of squash down that tooth and push that pigment into those grooves, um, which is kind of what we're doing now, really. But I'm still, I'm just using like a medium pressure. I'm not working into it too much yet because I still want to add some darker colours. And think of it as the more kind of grain you have left, the more layers you can add. The smoother it is, often the harder it is to keep adding more layers because the pigment's kind of got nothing else to grip onto in a way. But obviously the end result, we do want everything to be looking as smooth and kind of soft as possible to really like represent that fur texture.
So you want to shade around all of those lighter tufts and you're kind of shading in that negative space. So I'm just adding a little bit underneath this curl.
So it should look something like that. We've you know built up that contrast a lot more and we can definitely see where all those shadows and like little tufts are. I'm just gonna briefly go back in with the shade Butternut just to kind of add that kind of mid-tone and bring it back up to the surface a little bit because I think a lot of it's been kind of covered. Kind of work into some of those lighter tufts as well. And then I'm also going to go back in with that Warm Earth 5%, which has that really nice pinky tone to it. Basically do the same thing, just bring those kind of pinky tones back up to the surface, just because we've kind of covered them with the layers that we've added on top. added a little bit to the tips of that kind of curl going round. So yeah, that's added um, that really nice pinky tone in there. And we've kind of brought that back up to the surface so we can see it a little bit better. To continue to build up those shadows, I'm gonna go in with a shade darker, which is the Walnut Brown and basically go over everywhere where we added that Van Dyke brown. But you can start to kind of pick out some like little areas of detail and start using more of like the point of your tip. Um, just to start building up that kind of dark detail within the fur. It's raining literally so hard outside, so I'm sorry if you can hear the sound effects. Um, it's literally bashing against the window. Classic UK weather, really. I find it quite cosy to draw when it's like really bad weather outside. When it's sunny, you just wanna be outside. So when it's kind of raining, it really gets me in the mood to draw. I don't know what it is. I've, um, I've just started a really big commission this month of a, a cow. I usually just draw um, cats and dogs, like pets, but I've um, been commissioned to draw a cow, so it makes a really nice change. It's also 16 by 20 inch, so it's quite a big portrait. Um, so I've made a start on that today. And I'm gonna do a little bit more on it after I finish this tutorial. Um, so yeah, we'll see how it turns out. I've also started a little duckling tutorial for Patreon. So that's coming on nicely as well. I'm doing that on drafting film, um, which is very different in terms of the surface sort of texture in comparison with Fabriano. Um, but if you're someone that really likes detail and you just want to get straight stuck in with that detail rather than 
spending quite a lot of time building up tonal value. I think you'd really like drafting film. Um, if you're quite heavy handed, then maybe not because there's kind of no tooth to it. It's completely smooth. So there's nothing to squash down. So every layer that you add, it's kind of, um, you just need to be really light and delicate with everything, keep everything really controlled. But it is a really nice surface to work on. So if you've not tried it yet, then maybe give that a go. I think it's always good to try working on as many different surfaces as you can to try and get a feel for like what works for you. If you've always stuck to one paper, you might not know like any different. You might think that that works for you, but you might try something different and think that you prefer it. You just never know. Um, so yeah, that little duckling drawing on drafting film is for Patreon. I always do a brand new in-depth start to finish tutorial every month that my patrons can vote for. Um, so this month's most popular vote was the duckling. So yeah, I've also left the link to my Patreon in the description below. So if you want in more tutorials, I think there's almost nearly two years worth of tutorials, content, focus tutorials, materials, videos, um, there's literally everything on there. So if you're interested in more kind of coloured pencil based tutorials and just learning different techniques and growing your art business, then head over to my Patreon. I'm just darkening this little bit of shadow underneath this curl and adding in some kind of curved lines as well that are separating these two tufts. The more of a contrast we have, the more depth the ear has. Because it kind of looks like those shadows are underneath all of these tufts. They look like they're kind of sitting on top, which is exactly what we want. Obviously, all these little flyaway hairs we're going to add at the end using the craft knife slice tool. Just for that extra little bit of detail. So this shadow here connecting the ear to the head, just kind of doing back and forth motions, just smoothing that out a little bit. And then flicking it towards the ear. So at this point, I'm wanting to add in some of those subtle colours just to bring out like the richness of those gingery colours in the fur. 
So to do that, I'm gonna firstly go in with the Raw Sienna Luminance Pencil, which is obviously a really orangey ginger color. This isn't everywhere. It's mainly just like in this area here in those lightest tufts. And it probably looks a lot more vibrant than it actually is. And remember that we've added quite a few layers of like a pale colour. So it's actually not going to transfer on as bright as the actual pencil looks. But still you want to apply like a light to medium pressure. So you definitely don't add too much. You keep it subtle. But it'll just really help to capture that lighting that's bouncing off different areas of the ear. Maybe add a tiny, tiny little bit just to the top of the head there. And maybe a tiny little bit into these tufts on the left. Also going to add a little bit of the olive brown 10%. This is very well used as you can tell. It's kind of a perfect colour for ginger fur for those like lighter areas. Um, I'm just going to use this in those lightest areas. Not all of them because some of them are still really quite bright but just to give them a subtle tint of like a yellowy colour. I'm just going to work into those areas so again that's literally it just keeping it really really subtle and then i'm also going to use the beige red polychromo which is a lovely it's kind of like a salmon pink color maybe a bit paler than that um, and again you just want to work into those like subtle pinky tones with a medium pressure to kind of get it to show up, but we're still gonna keep it fairly subtle. Adding a little bit to the ends of that curl. To increase those golden colours within the lighter areas of the tufts, I'm going to go in with the Raw Umber Polychromo. Now this is quite vibrant, it doesn't look it, but it does transfer on quite vibrant. So with this one you want to keep a fairly light pressure, and I'm literally just adding it to like three or four of those tufts right at the front of the ear and a few to the left there as well and that's literally it we don't want it to look too yellow but a little bit can really enhance that kind of realistic element so I'm going to leave that there and then I'm going to go in with the raw umber 10% luminance pencil and this is where you want to add those kind of darker but subtle details within the lightest parts of the fur. So you can tell that it's quite a neutral colour. So perfect just for adding in those extra kind of subtle lines to build up more of that texture. Also luminance pencils are brilliant for blending as well. So if you've got any other areas, like in the lightest parts of the fur that are still looking quite grainy, you probably shouldn't do at this point, but if you do, um, by just going over it with the raw umber 10%, it should literally just melt it into the paper. It's like really good for blending and just smudging pigments together. It also shows up brilliantly over multiple layers of colored pencil. I 
think I'm just also going to add a little bit to this like really light area at the top left hand side of the ear, especially just in those shadowy areas to darken them a little bit. You can add a few sort of flyaway hairs going over the top of this area as well, just to start bringing in more of that realistic element. Like that. So I'm now going to go in with the dark sepia polychromo, which is a really dark brown colour. I'm going to use this to increase the contrast in those shadowy areas and just continue to add in any extra little dark details and lines kind of in between those tufts. This is where you can apply a really hard pressure in some areas just to get those really dark lines down.
just going to add a little bit of the um, burnt umber just to this little section here. Just to make that fur look a bit warmer because at the minute it's looking very sort of yellow and then really dark brown. So I just want to add in some of that kind of warmer chocolatey colour back in there. Just add it to any other little areas in the ear where you want some darker details, but not kind of too dark, just more sort of chocolatey brown, subtle details. So just to finish off this top left hand section, I want to make it like a similar tone to the top of the head here. And in the top of the head here, I used the cold gray one just to add some cooler tones. There's a lot more warm tones going on on this area of fur, but I am just going to add a really subtle little bit of the cold gray one just into some of those shadows. Just to kind of finish it off. I'm using the really flat side of the tip as well to give me that really soft sort of blurred line. And then I've twisted it round just to use the um, sharpest point of the tip. And I'm just gonna do some wispy sort of flyaway hairs along the edge. So to finish off then, I'm going to go in with the craft knife slice tool, which is basically a ceramic blade, um, which has like a pointy side and a curved side. It's not like sharp, sharp, you're not going to cut yourself on it. Um, but it's really, really good to kind of elevate that realistic element when you're using coloured pencils. So what you want to do is kind of add in these little flyaway hairs and tufts that are falling over the top of everything else. And because we've added quite a few layers, you can see how well that's working. You don't need to apply a hard pressure. It literally just removes those top layers of pigment and reveals like the paper or those initial base layers underneath, which are quite a lot paler.
but you can create some really lovely fine lines with it that's quite hard to achieve just by using colour pencils alone. So you can elongate some of these tufts and kind of flick them so they look more natural. Have some like random flyaway hairs. There's some here that are kind of curving round, going in the opposite direction. And you want to flick between using like the pointy side and the curved side, depending on how like thick or fine you want your line. So there's also this quite thick whisker um, on the left hand side kind of going in front of the ear which I left in part three because obviously I wanted to draw in the ear first. So I think I discussed how to draw whiskers in um, the previous part but basically you want to kind of um, go as quick as you can. The more careful you are with it the more wobbly it looks and then it doesn't look as natural. So I think if you look at roughly where the whiskers start in and then look at where it finishes and sort of head in the right direction, flicking at the end of your line. Once you've done your first one, you can then go over it a bit more carefully. quite thick so I'm just trying to widen that line a little bit by scraping at either ends or either side of what we've kind of etched out and then what you want to do is go in with the buff titanium or you could go in with a white pencil um, I just find that the luminance pencils work quite well showing up over multiple layers so you want to work into what we've just etched out and it'll just brighten up that line really nicely for you. And then flick at the end of your whisker. If you want to brighten it even more, I think that's probably the brightest whisker out of all of the ones we've drawn. You could go in with the fine nib Uniball Posca pen in white, which is like a wet medium, but you can smudge it away or you can wait for it to dry and kind of crisping the line up by crumbling away at it with a sharp pencil um, it's perfect for like those little highlights in the nose I think we used it there and for highlights and reflections in the eyes I just like to usually just dot in where they are and it just gives you that really nice little speck of highlight that's really bright as a contrast with everything else so I think I'm just going to apply this to the brightest part of the whisker Kind of in the middle and then just use my finger to just spread out the ends like that so it looks a bit more natural so i think i'm going to leave that there for part four and um, we've got quite a lot done there so hopefully you've got yourself a really nice realistic ear and we've obviously finished off those whiskers as well um, especially on the left hand side we've still got a few to do on the right um, so for part five I think I'm going to do the right ear so we've got basically the whole entire face done and then um, 
the next part so I'm going to be drawing those little paws on either side and then we're pretty much done. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Like I said at the start, the link to my Patreon where there's like hundreds more tutorials just like this one um, is in the video description below. I've left the link down there. I've also left a link to the line drawing, the reference photo and the full materials list so you can follow through all the way along um, whilst I'm talking you through it. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you thought by commenting below and hopefully I will see you in the next one.